In today's video, we're checking out the Rode 3. Now, about three months back, Rode sent this out for the review. Uh, I kind of put it aside because I forgot about it. And over the last month and a half, I've been using it almost daily. This is an auto tuner. One of the reasons why I was keen to check this out was that it raised over $450,000 on a Kickstarter. So there's a lot of sort of crowdfunding that went on for this. And today, I'm gonna to tell you whether or not it's worth it, what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are, and whether or not you should buy it if you're looking at an auto tuner. Let's get into it. Here's the Rode 3 tuner up close. Now, the first thing that you'll probably note about it is that we have a USB-C type port on the back. This is for charging the internal battery. So thank God we don't need these things anymore, which are usually found on these type of tuners. Now, I like the clip-on headstock tuners. I think they're really cool, but I hate these batteries. Finding them can sometimes be a pain and overall just not a pleasant experience. So having a rechargeable battery built into a tuner is an absolute no-brainer. And being that this has a motor inside it, it requires far more power than one of these little watch batteries. Now, with the exception of bass guitar, this can be used with any type of guitar or mandolin. Banjo is also supported, so any type of, I guess, thinner stringed instruments you'll be, have no problems with. This isn't really designed for bass guitar, so I wouldn't be using it on that. Another cool thing about this is we get an LCD screen. Now, you might be thinking, hey, is that overkill, being that it's a tuner? Absolutely not. One of the great things about it is you can store different presets and tuning types. So if you want standard tuning, you can set that up for an electric guitar. If you play an acoustic and you might want to do a drop D or something like that, you can make a preset for that and it will intuitively know that that's the tuning for that particular preset. Every time you put it onto the tuning peg, hit a note, it will automatically tune up. I think that's really cool. Up next, I'm gonna walk you through the navigation menu. So we get the tuning options and this is where we can store all the different types of presets that we make for our instruments. If we so need to, we can add a new one in here. So this is really easy to use. Next, we have a metronome. Now, the cool thing about the metronome, not only will it just beep, but you can have it actually vibrate like a mobile phone would when it's on silent. So you can practice silently. You can have it beep and vibrate, just vibrate, just beep, or any combination of both. So yeah, overall, that's a really great thing. Makes silent practice handy. Now, one of my favorite things is the string winder. So imagine you've just replaced the strings on a guitar and you need to wind it up to create some tension on the string. We get three separate speeds on the winder, which is awesome, and it will also unwind as well. This works really well, but just be very, very careful. It goes really quickly, and I'll show you an example of that coming up. Lastly, we have the settings tab. In here, you can fine tune the tuner, uh, pun intended maybe. So yeah, we can change the note order depending on how we want to actually tune the guitar. We can change the name of the roadie, we can test it, make sure it's all working, and we can factory reset it. And there's an about page as well. When I first unboxed the Rode 3, it told me to get the app for my phone, and I kind of shook my head. I'm not a huge fan of having to get an app, but once it was installed, it worked the first time. I was able to get the new firmware down to the tuner without any issues. I didn't have to sign up for anything with this either, which was great. You can just do it as a guest, get the new firmware for your tuner, and you're good to go. So Overall, the experience with the app is great, and I don't, never, I don't ever have to use this again unless I wanna check for new firmware. One of the great things about the app, down the bottom under Discover, we have all the help sections you could need when it comes to using the Rode 3. But the great thing about it is, I didn't go through any of this. It was just intuitive enough, straight out of the box, using the tuner itself. So yeah, overall, they got this right. I really feel like in terms of app functionality, this is really, really straightforward. First up, I wanted to show you the winder. So this is how easy it is now to string up your guitar. Once you get the string in position, I'm just gonna do this manually just to get it going. All right, got that locked in. Now we hit the wind and I'm gonna go to the medium setting just to show you the speed. That's medium. This is as fast as it will wind, which is awesome. So this really will drastically save you time if you're restringing a lot of guitars, if you're a gigging musician. Usually when I gig, I restring before every gig. So uh, yeah, if that's you. Now, you don't wanna to go too much with the winder because if you, it's a, this isn't tuning, this is just purely winding and you don't wanna snap the string, right? So just make sure that it doesn't have any way to detect if you've got enough tension on the string or not, right? So that's the E string on. From the winder on the main menu, if we go up back to tuner, select the preset, which is the electric guitar one that I've made. Then we can pop this on here, hit the string. It's 
it's doing micro adjustments now. And when it goes green and beeps, we're good to go. Now, if you're right-handed, the screen will be up the correct way. I'm a lefty. There might be a setting in here for that. I haven't actually looked, but it works fine. I can still read it fine in this particular, particular orientation. Now I've just been on winder mode and I've added the rest of the string. So now I'm gonna go back up to tuner and select my electric guitar. And I'm gonna retune all of the strings. Here we go, starting on the low E. Boom, once it goes green and it beeps, then we go over to the next string automatically, A. It's great seeing those micro adjustments too. It's really accurate. All right, done. Over to the G. Awesome. B. And over to the E. All right, it said uh, wrong string. Please make sure the roadie is on the correct peg. Now it was, and this only seems to happen on some guitars on the E string. Usually if I do it a second time, it works It works without any issues. So I'll just try it again. Standard tuning, here we go. All right, so the second time the E string worked, I've come across that a few times where it doesn't respond as well on this high E. It's not all guitars either. Maybe it's something to do with the shape of the tuner. I'm not exactly sure this peg here, but yeah, a couple of times where it's a bit of a looser fit, sometimes it doesn't respond quite as well, but yeah, overall it works. Here we go. And lastly, let's just take a quick look at the metronome. So if we go into the metronome mode here, we can set the amount of beats per minute and all that kind of stuff. And we can also control the beat count. So we can have like a four, four, or we can change it up to you know, five beats per bar or six or eight or whatever we want to choose, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, if we go down to feedback, we've got it's currently set to mute. If we go in here, we can turn it to beep, vibrate, beep and vibrate. So if we select that one. So there you go. You're hearing it on my shirt mic now. So you can hear the vibration as well. You can feel it. It feels like your phone's ringing, basically. It's pretty cool. All right, so let's wrap this video up. I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this unit. Now, if you don't have a smartphone, you're gonna be missing out on those firmware upgrades, but odds are most people who are interested in this, who are watching YouTube, probably have some sort of smartphone in their possession or someone they know does. So you can easily get the firmware online to upgrade this as it comes out. Now, I really like the fact that that whole process is very simple no convoluted menu systems, the app is really functional, and overall it just works really well. Now the tuning reliability in terms of pitch and all that kind of stuff is fine, and after testing it with other tuners, it hits pitch properly every time you go to tune your strings, which is great. Now, one of my favorite things about this, and one of the things I've been using it the most for, is the winder, the winder rocks. If you're sick of winding strings manually or by hand, then get one of these, they're really cool for that. Now in terms of the actual tuner function, I do find that sometimes it doesn't always work on the high E string on a couple of the guitars and other guitars it's fine on as well, but I just have to go back in there, select it again and give it another shot and it usually finds pitch. I think if the string is already too tight, it has a harder time sometimes coming back down to the note as opposed to pushing it upwards. So if you're already lower, it's a lot easier for the tuner to detect pitch going up. At least that's my experience with it. If you already own one of these, let me know if you've encountered that issue as well. I wouldn't say it's a problem that can't be corrected in firmware upgrades. It's weird saying firmware upgrades for a tuner, but it's true, it's software driven. So the fact that it has a metronome, a tuner, a winder, and you can make it work on electric guitars, acoustics, banjos, mandolins, and all that kind of stuff. I really like this. So I can see what people, you know, I had no expectations of this, to be honest. I kind of let it sit there for a while because I was like, it's a tuner, how cool can it be? It's pretty cool. 
<laughs> a massive thanks to the guys from Rody3 for sending this out for the review. If you want to find out about it, links will be below. Thanks again. Catch you soon. See ya.